season three is when the honeymoon phase is over. This season of The Chosen is the most dramatic, emotional, high stakes season yet. I have chosen you 12 as my apostles. Don't feel any different. I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. I have to start with the most important question. Keep playing Cooper or bring back Dak? Oh, bring back Dak for sure. I'm yeah. uh, I'm a big, I got my Dak jersey hanging up right over here. Um, I I am super grateful for, for Cooper's uh, performance and, and ability to, to keep us afloat. But uh, I feel like the, the ceiling is higher with, with Dak in there. Um, but either way, whoever's in there, I'm, I'm ride or die Cowboys fan. So I'm uh, I'm I'm in it no matter what. So that's all good. <laughs> so how was season three? Well, season three of The Chosen was definitely a, a challenge, but in the best ways. It was, you know, the the weather is one aspect. There was. Yeah, delays. I heard it was toasty. Very toasty. Um, at this point, we've shot in every type of weather, so we're getting used to it. But uh the the weather covid for the first time presented issues last season in season two we had you know we were kind of in a bubble and it was not as as much of a problem with production but uh there was a lot of delays construction delays all sorts of stuff that that came up um and then emotionally you know uh, little james this season uh has his most emotional storylines yet uh there was a lot of very personal scenes that i i was so uh honored to to get to be a part of um but yeah it, it was a, an exhausting shoot but it was incredibly rewarding and i'm so excited for everyone to see what we worked on for for season three actually on sunday i was at the catholics in media association the sema awards which were here in la uh -huh. and watch Jonathan accept the best TV series for The Chosen. Oh, wow. How cool. Yeah, he's he's great. I, I actually got to share my very first one-on-one -on -one scene with him in season three of The Chosen, which is actually in episode two. So if you go see the first two episodes in theaters mm -hmm. starting on the eight, on November 18th, uh, you'll get to see that scene. But it was uh, that was easily one of the highlights, not just of my my time on the chosen but of my acting career in general getting to to do a one-on-one -on -one scene with jesus i'm I'm so excited for people to see that that's well, what do you think at this point little james thinks of everything that's been going on because what i like is that you know the very humanistic portrayals of all of the guys and girls as as they're dealing with their world being turned upside down. So sort of where is he as season three begins? And no spoilers here, but as season yeah. three begins, sort of where is he in his head? So little James is, uh, you know, in season three of The Chosen, he's he's struggling more than he has in the previous seasons, um, both physically and internally. And I think that uh, little James is, is really starting to not doubt why he's following Jesus, but doubt uh, his worthiness or his uh, use in the group. And I think that he is comparing himself to others as we all do and mm -hmm. wondering why me or why not me? Why is this person getting healed? And I'm not, this person doesn't even, doesn't even know Jesus. This is a stranger. And I've been one of the first two apostles that's like followed him all along. And uh, so all of those, those things are, are, issues that little James is, is wrestling with throughout season three. And ultimately, uh, as I mentioned, he, he has, he confronts Jesus about it. And, and his story continues after that, uh, where you see his journey of, of self-acceptance and we really dive into the relationship between faith and healing. We dive into the, the relationship between faith and healing and how complicated that relationship is and how, nuanced and, and different it is between mm -hmm. um, groups and people and churches. And uh, I'm, I'm honored to be, you know, a part of the spark that can hopefully 
um, lead to more conversations around healing and uh, within the church and within, uh, you know, people of faith in general, because it's something that I had to come to the realization myself that uh, I don't, I didn't need the type of healing I thought I did. And I used to have a lot more uh, bitterness and, and, and honestly hate towards my disability and towards my limp. I, mm-hmm. I, uh, it was something I hated about myself and I've grown to now love it about myself. And uh, I see it as a strength and not a weakness and, and little James isn't quite there yet. Uh, but I'm excited to be starting little James on that journey and hopefully uh, inspire other people that are watching it to begin that journey themselves. I know you have the um, What's Your Limp podcast. I don't know, maybe we could get Dak on there some time to talk about recovering from injury and yeah, recovering yeah. from injury and recovering from some more injury. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I actually, I've, I've already uh, touched base with some of his people. So maybe that will, uh, that will happen. And then maybe after the season, we'll, we'll get him on. So we'll see. Stay tuned. Yeah. I was just watching, rewatching the episode where the issue comes up of why hasn't little James been healed. And that's a huge question for not just people of faith, but everyone, why did the treatment work for you? But it didn't work for me. Yeah. Why is my twin fine? And I'm not, why is my brother fine? But I'm not, why did my sister go to this church and get this big healing and everybody prayed for her and now she's great and not me. Yeah. You know, that's such a huge question. So what do you hear from people as you're out and about? Because everybody's touched that sort of idea in some way in their life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the people that uh, I hear from a lot are other people that have disabilities or that have loved ones who do. Uh, and that's been one of the big like catalysts for me to be a little kinder to myself and to accept myself and my differences because I see these beautiful people that have the same disabilities as I do in many instances, and they are connecting with this character and it's helping them accept themselves more. Um, and that has, has shown me like, Hey, why can't I accept myself a little bit too? If this character is helping these people do it, um, it should help me too. And, uh, that's, it's been life-changing playing little James and interacting with the fans of the show and people who have connected with little James in particular. Um, and the more I've spoken about my own insecurities and struggles, the more, uh, the less alone I've felt and the more other people have opened up to me about their struggles. And I have mothers reach out and say that, you know, their 12 year old daughter is getting bullied for her scoliosis. And, um, you know, I've, I've had, uh, there's a, a fan who has cerebral palsy who, uh, was at the feeding of the 5,000. She was one of the investors there. And I got to meet her for the first time after being like pin pals on social media for years. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's, it's really, it's such a, a personal intimate relationship between, you know, all of us and the fans of the show in a way that's really unique. It's not like that with other shows. Um, and, and it's, it's a really, really special relationship and I'm, I'm so grateful for it. What is it about playing this character other than your disability? What is it about playing this character on this show in this environment that surprised you the most? Because, you know, this ain't 1883 or right. probably other things that you've been in. So what about this, this whole process has been the most surprising? I think the, how everyone on, on this show for, for a faith-based project, um, it, it's all of the cast and crew have, have such a wide range of belief systems or religions or uh, faith or lack thereof and, or just backgrounds and upbringings. And it's so unique that despite all of that everyone's able to come together and buy into this this story and the message of this story and uh you know believe in the 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 power of the message of this story and these characters and it, it's such a a group effort every there's no divas there's no egos mm-hmm. like you'll find every set there's like the 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 problem there's the one that's that's like the that that you know, once like only green M&Ms in their trailer or whatever, you know, the people that get big heads, there's none of that on, on this show. Um, everyone other than Jonathan, of course, but, uh, no, everyone on the show is just so 
so kind and and loving and supportive of one another uh you know it doesn't matter who i'm doing a scene with i feel 100 percent comfortable being totally vulnerable with them and uh even beyond the show we're also supportive of each other in our other career or our other uh you know acting jobs or mm-hmm. um you know it just it, it's genuinely the type of friend group that i've i've always wanted and i'm so i'm even more grateful for that than i am for what it's done for my career and uh that is unique the the fact that there's no one on set that it's like oh this guy again like everyone is so uh just kind and loving and supportive of of one another and it it's truly the best work environment that i could i could dream of so who's your your bff your chief partner in crime on set oh man um you know it's it's that's the another thing it's like i i hang out with everyone really like i i kind of float around but you know the people that i i i joke around a lot with are george who plays john and then joey who plays thomas and um noah who plays andrew like we the four of us are probably the the class clowns um that are are always doing bits and doing these you know goofy voices and stuff but also we can connect on a deeper intimate level at the same time. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've never been, uh, while I'm a big football fan now, I, I used to just be the art, you know, the theater kid. I didn't know anything about football. Um, and I always had more girlfriends than guy friends because I was really in touch with my emotions. I wasn't like, you know, macho or anything. So I, all of the, the, you know, women on the show, I, I love and am really close to as well, but, uh, really everyone like there's the whole group like there's no one that you know if I'm eating lunch with one-on-one that you feel awkward with or like you're not able to connect with them um, everyone on the show I I consider you know a, a, among my closest friends and you know I love I love all of them equally yeah so it, it's interesting when you think about when times are hard when something is really hard that's when people reach for a rock to cling to and often is not it it's their faith. So when things get really hard for you, how do you deal with that? Because you've been through the surgeries, you've been through probably the rejection as an actor, who the heck knows all that stuff. So what, what's your rock? What do you cling to? So what gets you through? I've always had a very, um, I've always had faith and, and believed, and I think going through the medical issues um, helped with this as well because no matter how bad it got, no matter how scary it was, I always came out the other side. I was always okay one way or another. Um, and so now I, that's kind of carried over into adulthood, no matter how scary the situation is, whether it's financial, you mm-hmm. know, stuff, because there's been a lot of really, especially having kids, a lot of really scary like seasons in our life where it's like, how are we going to get through these next few months? um before the next season starts up or whatever you know different... acting the original gig economy exactly <laughs> and it's so there's a lot of that um but then it's like you know what we're going to get through it we always do and um so i've always had faith that things like this too shall pass is one of my favorite quotes um but also my kids uh you know becoming a dad has been the the best thing that's ever happened to me so everything I do is, is for them. And when it gets tough, when I feel discouraged, when I feel, uh, when I have doubt, when I, I don't know if I can do something, I think of them and the, the influence that I want to have on them and the, uh, you know, the, I, I want to give them the same determination and belief in themselves, mm-hmm. uh, with whatever they want to pursue when they're older. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's been, they're they're the ones that I, I cling on to most of all, whenever I'm, I'm feeling scared or, uh, feeling doubt or anything like that. Um, and yeah. Have they, have they met Jonathan? They have, uh, briefly, they're all like, let's see, seven, four and two. Um, and at some uh, point they might have to explain this to someone. It's going to come off sounding very strange. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh. (laughs) It is funny. Like my oldest fully understands, like we're all acting and you know, that he's not really Jesus and stuff like that. But, um, the, the other two that when they see me on screen and they hear me speaking with my, my accent and 
all of that, they get kind of confused where they're like, why are you doing that? Like you could see it on their face, but uh, yeah, they've, they've met uh, most of the cast now and it's hard to bring them on set being so young. Once they get a little older, it'll be easier where they'll actually like keep quiet when we're rolling. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I can't wait. And it's fun because a few of our other cast mates have kids or are starting to think about that or, you know, like the, the chosen family is growing. So uh soon they'll you know they they they're getting more and more playmates uh to have on set so it's uh it's fun watching all of that unfold so do people come up to you and expect you to be just a font of bible verses or (laughs) or some such thing like that when they run into you if they do they'll they'll be disappointed unfortunately (laughs) I, i i i could do better in that area but um i Typically, when people come up, they're, you know, just super excited. The show, you know, unlike a lot of other shows where 1883, for example, people are big fans of it, but it's not affecting them on a deep spiritual They're not living level. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And with The Chosen, it's like, oh, this has literally, like, saved my life, some people have have told us. Or, um, you know, that, that it's brought them back to their faith or whatever the case may be. So, it's a really um, it's not as much about like, Oh, I want a picture with this person from TV. It's more, I want a picture with this person that has been a part of something that changed my life. Um, And it's, it's, it feels more uh, intimate and more uh, genuine. And I I love interacting with, with fans a a couple days ago, someone in the grocery store, I saw like, we made eye contact as we passed and uh, came over and was so excited. And uh like it's just it's really cool and i had my daughters with me so they always get confused whenever that happens um like why people are wanting a picture with their dad um but it's uh it's fun you know getting to to be a part of that because i'm such a big movie fan and and tv fan and cowboy fan like when i get to meet people that uh you know i i enjoy watching their work it's exciting so i i i it's humbling getting to be on the other side of that too well, if you met Dak Prescott, would you be totally chill or would you be an idiot or so, something in between? It's interesting. So my dad is actually the mayor of Arlington, Texas. And, uh, oh, um, well, we uh, he he at, back when COVID first like became a thing, my dad got it and was had it pretty severely and was in ICU and wow. uh, had, a, had a hard time. So, uh, I, my dad's, one of his good friends is the head of, of security for the Cowboys. Um, so I got a video from Dak to show my dad oh, uh, nice. while he's in the hospital where it was him just, you know, telling him to get well. So I haven't met him in person yet, but I, I connected with him through, through my source. So, uh, one day maybe I'll get to, but I think I'd play it cool. Like I, I used to cover the Cowboys, so I got to know Tony Romo pretty well, and nice. I I caught a pass from Roger Staubach once, dude. Um, so maybe Goodness. I'll uh, I'll meet Dak and and get to catch a pass from him as well. So we'll see. Knock on wood. Hopefully he'll drop it right in the numbers. Yeah, I'm sure he will. You know, I think it's it. I've covered entertainment for a long time, and I think when people meet actors, truly. And, and no insult to you, for the most part, they want to meet the character. Yeah, yeah. And the actor is the next best. Right. Um, but this raises that to a whole new level. Yeah. What is your thought when you meet people? Because you have like almost an extra responsibility when you meet people than just someone who just plays a doctor on a TV show or like just, you know, <laughs> cop number three or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's... uh. It's interesting because we, you know, like I feel for Jonathan really, because, you know, playing Jesus, I'm at least, you know, my character can be as flawed as I want him to be, uh, or as as they write him to be where, where, you know, Jonathan's character is a different level, but, um, it's, uh, for me, it's not as difficult considering the fact that little James is pretty close to who I am. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, a little more timid when it comes to like conflict. I'm, I tend to be a peacemaker, uh, but then I relate to all of the physical stuff little James is going through. So that uh, it, it's not as big of a jump for me when I meet people like, you know, if I was playing Captain America or something that might be different, but uh, you know, it, it's with little James, it's, it's pretty much me just without the accent. So uh, 
yeah, it, it's not it's not that weird, but I, I enjoy any time I get to interact with fans. So if you had to sum up season three in a, in a few words, what would it be? Season three is when the honeymoon phase is over. Uh, the Chosen is, uh, th- this season of The Chosen is the most dramatic, emotional, high stakes season yet. It's our biggest season yet. Um, and I I can't wait for people to see it and be moved by it and challenged by it and uh, affected by it. Because in my opinion, this is easily our, our best season yet. Last thing, a could very, very important um your season prediction for the boys for the cowboys okay for america's last... team uh i i don't want to uh jinx it by saying what i think will happen if they get into the playoffs but i do think they'll get into the playoffs and my prediction is that three of the nfc east teams will make the playoffs the eagles giants and cowboys um i think that the cowboys will be a wild card team but i think their record will be no worse than 11 wins uh i'm gonna say 12 i'm gonna say 12 and 5 is gonna be their record uh and that they will still be a wild card team because the eagles and giants will be right there as well right and then we'll see what happens from there well thank you so much for taking the time i appreciate it of course thank you i enjoyed it 